Hello and welcome to everyone. It's so nice to have so many registered for our virtual town hall meeting today. Welcome to our honored guests. We appreciate their attending and taking time out of busy schedules to attend. Before I formally introduce, we'll do just some brief housekeeping. My name is Lisa DeLeon and I am the Prairie Chapter Chair. One CPD hour has been granted for this event. Questions were sought in advance and have been sent to our guests previously. Peter Veres is moderating this session and will post those questions and will explain further. We will begin with a few comments from Peter, then some remarks from the minister and MLA Yassine before getting to the questions. We realize many of you are seeking information and clarity. I will introduce our three panelists and then hand it over to Peter. I'd like to welcome the Alberta Minister of Labor and Immigration, Mr. Jason Copping. Minister Copping was elected to the Legislative Assembly of Alberta on April 16, 2019, as the MLA for Calgary Varsity. Jason Copping was appointed as Alberta's Minister of Labor and Immigration on April 30, 2019. His extensive background in labor relations makes him well positioned to take on this portfolio as Alberta's government seeks to create more jobs and deliver on fairness for newcomers entering the workforce. We also welcome MLA Mohammed Yassin, who was elected to the Legislative Assembly of Alberta, representing the constituency of Calgary North on April 16, 2019. He was appointed Parliamentary Secretary of Immigration on April 30, 2019. He is currently a member of the Standing Committee on Resource Stewardship. Additionally, he is co-chair of the Caucus Outreach Committee. Last but not the least, Percy Cummins is the Executive Director of Evidence policy and governance in the policy and strategy division of Alberta Labor and Immigration Plan. Percy has held his current position since 2015. He started his career in human resources in 1978 and joined the Alberta government in 1980 as a social worker. Over the years, he has held a variety of positions in human service delivery offices in rural and urban Alberta, intergovernmental affairs, as well as program and strategic policy development. He has received five Premier's Awards for his work in service delivery, policy, and legislation development. Welcome, Mr. Cummins. Finally, I hand over to Peter Veres, a familiar face to many, a longtime immigration practitioner, former immigration officer officer and past Prairie Chair. Peter, take it away. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Coping, uh, Parliamentary Secretary of Immigration, MLA, uh, Mohamed Yassin, and Mr. Percy Cummings. Thank you again very much for, for taking time out of your busy schedules and agreeing to speak to the Canadian Association of Professional Immigration Consultants. We're very grateful for, for the time that you've made for us today. Um, as we all know, Alberta has a strong history of, of welcoming newcomers, and we all recognize the importance of immigrants, uh, uh, that immigrants uh, to the province's social and economic development, from attracting specialized foreign talent to filling shortages to key sectors to bringing new business and innovation to Alberta. I think we can all agree that, um, that immigration is an important economic policy tool. Um, so um, what I'd like to do today is uh, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to you know, invite uh, Minister Coping to say some remarks, uh, some perhaps share with, him, with, with us his vision as to where the, the, where the, 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 the um, you know, where AIMP and the, the, the immigration policies are going for the next few years. And, and then what we'll do after that, we will invite uh, Mr. Mr. Yassin to speak as well, do, do his remarks. And then we're going to actually delve into some of the questions um, regarding uh, three, three major areas, I think. One of these, the refusal to process list. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the, the downsizing of AIMP. And finally, in, in a more, sort of a more exciting note, 
we'll talk a little bit about the uh, the Alberta Advantage um, program that you that, 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 that there's it's it's in the books. So without further ado, I'm going to pass my 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 virtual headset over to you, Minister. The floor Thank is you yours. Much. Thank you very much, Peter, and and uh, and thank you for the uh, the kind introduction, Lisa, and uh, and greetings uh, virtually to uh, my colleagues, uh, uh, Mohammed and uh, and Percy. Thanks so much for uh, for joining us here today, and thank you all you all for for attending. It's it's truly is a pleasure for me to join you today to discuss Alberta's proposed changes to the uh, Temporary Foreign Worker Program, uh, the Alberta Immigration Nominee Program, as well as touch on the Alberta Advantage Immigration Strategy. Now, as we all know, and, and we see this as you know, doing this uh, uh, event uh, virtually, this is a difficult time for thousands of Albertans in the province. And this includes uh, newcomers and temporary foreign workers as they grapple with the realities of COVID-19 and low oil prices. But, but grappling with adversity is, is not a foreign concept to uh, many newcomers and TFWs. Uh, historically, newcomers have faced tremendous barriers uh, while trying to establish themselves in, in Canada, uh, and too many face unemployment or underemployment because of barriers such as language, housing, and qualification recognition. And these systemic issues can create unpredictability and uncertainty in the newcomer's ability to settle and integrate in Alberta during during the best of times. And, and, and while our government has fought hard to remove these barriers, and, and we devoted a significant amount of um, uh, time in our platform uh, through our newcomers action plan uh, these these issues can be exponentially worse for newcomers and temporary foreign workers during economically challenging times uh, that we find ourselves in right now so so that is you know why we over the past year we consulted with newcomers industry experts businesses municipalities and organizations who work with newcomers to help develop our alberta advantage immigration strategy uh, this was again part of our commitment and our platform to newcomers, which, as, as indicated by, by Peter earl, earlier, it, are vital for the Alberta economy and, and vital for our society. Uh, and as many as you know, I was, uh, you know, when we did our uh, consultation, I was very excited to be able to launch our new strategy in the spring of this year. Uh, but as everyone knows, uh, unfortunately, COVID happened, uh, and so that launch has been delayed. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, a little bit about that. Uh, uh, later today, and, and now we are in a position of dealing with one of the uh, uh, the, the worst economic downturns in Alberta's history uh, since the uh, since, since the Great Depression. You know, as of July 2020, Alberta's unemployment rate was 12.8 percent, uh, as more than 360,000 Albertans have lost their jobs as a result of the global pandemic. And, and just so that you know, people understand is, is that even though that's the, uh, the, uh, the official unemployment at 12.8%, that doesn't capture the number of individuals who have uh, stopped seeking employment at this point in time. And the, the true numbers are actually closer to, uh, to a 20% uh, unemployment rate. Now, recognizing these challenges, Alberta's government is proposing changes to the TFW program and AINP to create more opportunities for unemployed workers currently living in Alberta. And this includes newcomers, and temporary foreign workers that are that are already in the province. You know, as, as many of you people on this call know, uh, studies have shown that newcomers are more likely to be negatively impacted uh, by unemployment during a recession, which is why we need a plan. And this plan needs to be flexible and focused on attracting talent from around the globe and supporting newcomer talent that is already in Alberta. So that is why we requested uh, the federal government to limit the number and types of jobs available to temporary foreign workers. Now, limiting the inflow of TFWs will ride Alberta's and TFWs who are already in the province, many of whom have lost their jobs because of the economic down, downturn, with greater access to available jobs. Uh, it is important to know that any temporary foreign worker currently in Alberta who has applied for permanent residency will continue with their application and will not be impacted by this change. Now, we also know some job creators have had a hard time filling vacancies in certain uh, uh, employment sectors, such as uh, caregiving, emergency response, technology, hospitality positions in the mountain parks, and agriculture. And that is why these sectors are exempt from these changes. Now, employers in this, these, these sectors will be able to continue applying for LMIAs and have access to temporary foreign workers to fill positions and meet labor demands. And these changes are temporary as we navigate the challenges of the global pandemic. 
and we are ensuring that every person in our province has a chance and the opportunity to succeed as we move towards a sustainable and a prosperous future for our province. And we, and this is a key component of our economic recovery plan. And, and please know that as our economy improves, the Joint Canada Alberta Working Group uh, will, and Percy Cummins is, is on that group, uh, will review these temporary changes on a quarterly basis and will make necessary adjustments. Uh, now, as part of the adjust uh, to the TFW program, we are also reducing the number of nominations that are being processed through the AINP, again, to reflect the current demands of the labour market uh, in Alberta. Uh, for the 2020 calendar year, nomination certificates available through the AINP will be reduced by roughly 30% from 6, 000, just over 6,200 slots to, uh, to 4,000. Now, all completed applications that can be processed within the 2020 certificate allocation will be processed as efficiently as possible. And when our nomination certificate target is met, we will stop issuing certificates, but continue to assess uh, process applications where feasible. Now, approved applicants in these cases would be issued a certificate uh, in January of 2021. Now, this, this means that some applications uh, currently in the processing queue will exceed the current averaging processing times. But this processing times, as you can expect, are, are, are impacted by the pandemic. However, I'd like to point out that labour and immigration staff work quickly through the pandemic to implement temporary measures to assist applicants and nominees through the AINP process. Some of the changes that, that we have made include allowing copies of Alberta's post-secondary transcripts, test registrations and signatures in lieu of originals, a very hard to be able to hand in the originals. And the department also provided applicants with up to six months to provide necessary and outstanding documents. In addition to applicants who applied prior to April 29th, uh, we were provided additional time to find the qualifying uh, employment if they actually had lost their jobs, because we recognize through this economic downturn, uh, some people have lost their jobs and it might be difficult to find uh, other employment. And we made all these temporary changes to ensure minimal impact to, uh, to applicants and continue, continue to provide services that newcomers uh, depend upon. Now, the, the AINP will continue to review all the temporary changes to the TFW program and the AINP program and the refusal to process list, and we will make adjustments as needed. And as indicated, we'll do this on a ongoing quarterly basis. Now, as we move forward, I, I encourage you to visit alberta.ca for information related to the changes, including the AINP criteria, which will be posted on the, uh, on the website. As our economy economy recovers, international talent will be more important than ever. Uh, before the global pandemic, we were in a race as a country, as a province, for the best and brightest newcomers around the world, and, and we know we will continue to need them. So, and, then, and, and in this knowledge economy, people with training and skills that are in demand can live and work just about anywhere they want. And the only way to get these people is to create the right incentives. So that is why, as part of our Alberta Advantage Immigration Strategy, uh, we are working on developing four new streams under the AINP. And the first one will be the Rural Entrepreneur uh, Immigration Program. Uh, we are also, because we, also, we understand we also need to spread the benefits, not only in terms of the, the cities of Calgary and Edmonton, where the vast majority of our newcomers come, uh, but also to the uh, rural communities. And, uh, and this stream uh, will assist by encouraging newcomers to start uh, and uh, sustain businesses there. Now, candidates for this program uh, would have to meet requirements for net worth investment. Uh, they would need relevant experience plus a sound business plan, and they would have to live in the area to run their enterprise. And we hope to energize rural regions by importing talent and ingenuity from around the world. Now, the second steam stream will be the Rural Renewal Immigration Program. Now, this is meant to draw newcomers who are ready to live and work in rural communities and to bring skilled people to places where their skills are in short supply. Uh, currently, a small number of newcomers settle in rural areas each year, uh, and this pro program would prioritize applications from newcomers who want to build their lives in smaller towns and villages across the province. Now, communities will prior prioritize their labor needs and support newcomers who can fill these needs in their application to the AINP and on their path to permanent residence. The third initiative will support the immigration strategy, to, to support the strategy will be the International Graduate Entrepreneur Immigration Program. Now, among the Prairie Provinces, Alberta has the highest number of international students. These are brilliant graduates uh, emerging from post, our post-secondary uh, system every year, and we need to make it easier for them to stay here and turn their bright ideas into new ventures. And, and we want to ensure Alberta trained talent stays within our province and has the opportunity to create businesses 
uh, and create jobs not only for themselves, but other Albertans and, uh, and newcomers. Now, in this fast-moving global economy, uh, we, we are committed to attracting and retaining the best of the best, and not only those from Alberta's institutions, uh, but we are also pursuing talent from the best schools, especially in the United States. And this will be the aim of our fourth stream, the Foreign Graduate Startup Visa. You know, from our perspective, it, it, it is incumbent upon us to seize the moment to reach out to foreign-born students, uh, international students in the U.S., and show them that Alberta is a great place to live and to uh, and to work. And uh, and we're open uh, and to uh, newcomers and, and a strong entrepreneurial culture. Uh, so through this program, we could nominate uh, these students for permanent residence if they prove determined to stay and build a business here in Alberta. And we are working to launch all the, the, the three new entrepreneur programs supporting rural communities and leveraging the talent of Alberta talented grads and US grads in fall of 2020. And all these actions are a key component of our economic recovery plan. Lastly, in, in the closing, you know, our government wants to ensure everyone in Alberta has a chance to exceed uh, newcomers and Albertans alike. Uh, for now, these are just temporary adjustments, uh, and this will help ensure unemployed Albertans, including newcomers and temporary foreign workers, have better opportunity to, uh, to find work uh, as we get through this economic crisis and work through these difficult, uh, challenging times. But as our economy recovers, uh, we will continue to look at ways to make Alberta the destination of choice uh, for, for hardworking, talented, entrepreneurial newcomers from around the world. And immigration will continue to play a vital role in our economic and, and social success. So I, I want to thank you once again uh, for having me today. I look forward to uh, the question and answer period. And with that, I would like to turn it back over to our to our chair. Thank you so much, uh, <clears throat> Minister Coping. Um, first of all, we don't envy your position. Uh, where you, you're, you're looking over and you're handling some, some very different portfolios, particularly the labor piece and, and, and as it relates to immigration as well. Uh, there's a lot to unpack with, uh, with, with what you just uh, just just mentioned. And uh, and, uh, and what, I, what we'd like to do is, like I said before, what we'd like to sort of break down the questions in, into the three different areas of the RTP, the refusal to process list uh, sort of issues, the downsizing of AIMP, and then the new strategies, the new immigration strategies that you had uh, alluded to. So, but before we, uh, before we sort of open the questions to, um, for the refusal to process list, um, I just would like to have your opinion, Minister. Um, why introduce a, a refusal to process list of occupations? We already have a robust and onerous labor market impact assessment process managed by ESDC's temporary foreign worker unit, whose mandate is, in fact, to put Canadians and, and PRs, uh, Canadian citizens and PRs, and in our case, Albertans first. And, and allow the, the use of the program as a strategy, as a, as a strategy of last resort. And I'm just wondering whether the message that we're sending by doing a refusal to process um, list, uh, are, you know, are, what's the message that we're sending is that, or could could be uh, that the, the province may not be seen as as, as open for business as as it claim uh, we're now constructing the, the sort of who, the talent that can come to Canada or to Alberta. Um, are we saying that, you know, the, that we do not trust employers to determine their own workforce needs? Um, or, 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 or can this be seen as almost a cosmetic sort of uh, approach to, 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 to the issue? Um, and again, I, I say that in the, in, in, the, in, in the best faith possible here, I'm just wanting to Give my our head around as to why a, a refusal to process list when there is already a mechanism for that. My apologies. I will no uh, self off mute. No, so, so thanks for a great question. And, and first, I want to uh, start start out. We and we fully appreciate and we fully understand the need for uh, newcomers to help build uh, this province. In fact, it, it is an integral part of our economic re recovery plan. And we look at the entrepreneurial streams, which we're going to be continue to uh, uh, to pursue uh, this fall. Uh, and we recognize that newcomers have built this province uh, for for years. The the refusal process list actually there already was a refusal process list that was in place. Yes, there this was is not, yeah. not a new um, uh, a new invention. Uh, we are simply e expanding. Um, those those items in terms of the, the refusal process list and, and a better way to actually think about it is is 
is we, we flipped it on its head and saying, look, at these are these are the ones that they're the exceptions to the list, uh, and we will be posting that in the uh, in the near future once we finalize approval. But it's it's also to send a signal to to um, uh, to employers because having employers having to apply for LMIAs and spend the money on that when there's there's you know based on our data there's available talent here, um, it makes it it's more efficient for them to focus on that at this time uh, because we also recognize. Uh, not only are we at record highs on employment and, and the, uh, the data, the most recent data I, I indicate, you know, just under, you know, approximately 15%, that's actually higher than that uh, when we look at that. And, that's, and that includes TFWs who are already here. So it's, 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 this is a, uh, a signal to, to, to ensure that our, our immigration policy uh, tracks the, um, the, uh, the labor market, right, in terms of the demand, uh, number one. Uh, and then, and number two, it's we're also doing it not only for the uh, for the benefit of um, uh, those who are already here uh, and be able to help them find jobs, but but you think about that, many TFWs, as you know, come to Canada on temporary permits, but not all of them, but the vast majority of them are looking for permanent residency, right? And one of the challenges is you come in here during an economic downturn. We have studies out there. You know, and our premier is, you know, as minister of, of uh, immigration federally knows this very well. Studies out there where if people come during an economic downturn, both the permanent residency or even temporary, try to bridge into permanent residency, this can have scarring implications economically for the entire lifetime of the people coming in. So, so we're doing this not only as, as as a way to actually help those who are here, including newcomers and temporary foreign workers, but we're doing this as a way to say, look, at we we, we are open to uh, newcomers, but we, we want to provide newcomers with opportunities. So we are actually slowing it down at this point in time, uh, given the, the current labor market, uh, with, with the chance to ramp it up. And then even on some of the, and, and it's been interesting, the conversations that we've had with our, our federal minister is like, for example, regarding the AINP, we've reduced the numbers for, for this year. Uh, but the conversation we've had is, is, uh, is that we want consideration that as targets get set in future years, like, that, that those those 2,000 slots, I, I want them in future years when our economy is booming again, right? Right. So so this isn't about closing the doors. This is this is about uh, matching the uh, the supply to to the demand to help those who are currently here right now and get them through the process. And quite frankly, to be to be to provide assistance to, you know, in recognition that when people come in a, uh, a in an economic um, downturn uh, and they can't find work. That, that's not good for them and, and it's not good for our economy as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I understand that the uh, problem that your secretary has seen is, uh, is, is, is online now. Is that correct? I, I don't see, um, I don't see Mr. Yassine. Oh, he's not, on, he's not on video, but I think he might be able to make some comments. Oh, I so. see. Mr. Yassine, are you on, online? I don't think he, uh, he, can you, Mr. Yassin, can you hear us? I, I guess we're going to have to just wait a little bit longer until he reconnects with us, if that's okay with you. Uh, so now just to dive a little bit deeper into, into sort of the RTP policy. Um, so, and, and a lot of our employers, uh, the employers that we're privileged to work with, uh, would want to know whether the RTP policy will be applied retroactively to pending applications, you know, submitted earlier, um, or is this going to be a going forward, uh, an on, you know, going forward type of, uh, of policy? Yeah, so, so we're not canceling LMI, any LMIAs. So people who have been approved LMIAs, um, th th their approval, it, it still stands. Um, what we're asking the federal government do, to do is, and some people have actually had LMIAs that were approved and that have been extended for ongoing periods of time. So, sure. so not to be extended. Um, so the, the once they run out, uh, not to be extended. Uh, and then for those that have got a, got an approval, uh, that stays in place because we do recognize that you know employers have done some work to, to do this. Um, but what we want to do is, is, is quite frankly, a, a temporary pause in the pipeline. Um, wrecking, and, and then also we, we have a program and, and, uh, and, and Percy, you can jump in and provide more details on it in, in terms of, but to actually assist um, employers saying, look at, I, I had a, um, I had a TFWs were a source of some of my, for my labor supply. So I'm having some challenges 
um, you know, with finding that um, that we we have we, we, you know we provide a service that actually helps link them with uh, with employers with um, with uh, supply here uh, in Alberta, and, and maybe uh, Percy, if I can I can ask you to provide a little more comment on the um, on the uh, on the name of the program, and, and and I just don't have the website in front of me uh, mm -hmm. on that. I'd be willing to, to dive in there. Uh, yes, thank you, Minister. I could elaborate a little bit. It's called the Employer Liaison Service. So mm -hmm. when uh, when an employer applies for, uh, if they're on apply for a labor market impact assessment for an occupation that's on the list, the refusal to process list, they'll be offered a referral to uh, the Employer Liaison Service, and there we have staff who will connect with the employer, both local workforce consultants that are uh, resident around the province, or uh, uh, will help them to connect to both the available workers in the local community, uh, work with them around uh, their attraction efforts, um, and really tap into the Alberta labor supply. So not just in their local area, but also looking beyond their community to where workers with those skills uh, might be and mm -hmm. helping the employer to uh, to attract those individuals. So uh, it really is intended to be um, uh, a support to employers to allow them to continue to grow their businesses and uh, uh, with the unemployment rate uh, where it's at, uh, the uh, the belief is there are sufficient local uh, local workers, like Alberta-based workers, uh, for the jobs that are available. And it's a matter of uh, uh, connecting and helping those employers connect with those workers mm -hmm. uh, to, to benefit both of them. I mean, and, and Percy, yeah. is there a provision? Of, I'm sorry, Mr. Please. No, no I, just, I just wanted to comment on Percy a bit before the, the next question is that we, what we've also done, like, for example, in the ag sector, um, where there has been, even though the the we maintain the 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 exception, um, and we didn't cancel the TF, TFWs, we're still coming into uh, in, uh, into the ag sector. But even with that, in terms of COVID-19 impacting the supply, so people, some people weren't coming. And so we set up a, a program to help connect um, the agricultural sector employers uh, with employees, and then also uh, attach some training dollars to that uh, to be able to assist uh, assist the, uh, the 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 industry. Because some some of the um, uh, like, despite even the leaving the the door open for uh, the current LMIAs that are in place, and then and also leaving it open for uh, a number of um, uh, occupations. Uh, COVID-19 has impacted the flow of people moving around the world, uh, not like naturally, uh, and so we 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 need to make sure that their employers have uh, every job is precious, and we need to make sure that jobs gets filled, those jobs get filled to the greatest extent possible. Sorry, I cut you off. So you had another question for Percy? No, no yeah, I just want to follow up both on for for yourself, Minister, and one for Percy. And if I may start with you, because that's sort of the the, the order. Uh, so the, the question last time, and I appreciate your answer for the RTP policy uh, that was, and we're just wondering not the ones that already have the LMIAs, but rather the ones that are in process now, currently, who've been in process for since March or, or even earlier, that have applied, would they be affected by the RTP, the new RTP occupations? So or the I'm occupations ask... on the RTP. So, so for example, you put it in, in March and you're still in progress, would they be affected? I, I think that was sort of the more direct question that the member had. Yeah, I'm going to ask Percy to, to weigh in on that one because um, I, yeah. the, the, I think I think the answer is yes, they will be affected. But Percy is going to give us the right answer right here. <laughs> Put you on the spot there, Percy. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so the intent is for it to apply to all pending LMIA applications. Okay. So anything that's been submitted but not approved yet would be subject to the uh, refusal to process list when it comes into force. Uh, and it would mean that the employer will get their application and their application feedback um, 
And that was one of, uh, that's a key element of the refusal to process list is the federal government won't keep the application fee. So right. the difference is in the LMIA process, you could get, you could apply, you go through it. Federal government says, no, there's sufficient, there's enough local workers and then, but they keep your fee. Yeah, absolutely. And if you wanted 10 workers, that's $10,000. So that's yeah. with the refusal to process list is they get their fee back and also a referral to our services. Yeah. And if I may just have a supplementary to the question, to, to your to your uh, last comment, uh, Percy, you, you talked about this on employer liaison program where an employer can actually call and say, look, you know, still need this, this skill set, can find it. Uh, what if, what if the, the, that particular um, service says, look, uh, there are none, we cannot. So is there any provision, is there safety valve there somewhere where the employer can still make an argument to um, to Service Canada and say, yes, we understand, or to, to, uh, yeah, to ESDC saying, yes, we understand that there is a, a refusal to serve, but these are my circumstances. Would there be any sort of room for discretion? It, really good question. So uh, I can go back to how we've applied the uh, the list in the past, where there is there is the ability to request an exception, mm -hmm. but understand that the exception requires it is not for an individual employer. It has to, if it's granted, it applies for that occupation uh, across the whole province. So right. in the past, the exceptions were uh, in the turnaround maintenance work with the uh, mm -hmm. big production facilities where they had some pretty very specialized workers like alloy welders, where unions and the uh, and the employer generally accepted that there was going to be a shortage of those workers. Uh, there weren't enough Canadian workers to fill the demand. Uh, and so an exception was made for certain trades. Um, more generally, I think uh, it's about Alberta workers first, but then we'd also expect uh, employers to have done the same kind of due diligence across the country uh, mm -hmm. and offer something competitive that would attract a Canadian worker to their job um, and would have to go through all of those steps before uh, uh, requesting an, ex an exception. Otherwise, they'll get frustrated. They'll be redirected to do that leg work. Um, uh, and I think right now in the current environment across Canada, uh, it, we would be hard pressed to, uh, except for a few areas, to demonstrate uh, there aren't Canadian workers available. Uh, to with the skill sets to do the work. No, and I and appreciate a, that. And, yeah. and and one of the advantages of having people direct people to the to the program is that gives the department line of sight on where the requests are. Uh, and we're going to be reviewing this quarterly, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in terms yeah. of because because we it, the base of this is it needs to be actively managed. Uh, but again, the whole purpose of this is to provide opportunities for people who are here, including newcomers and TFWs who are often the hardest impacted uh, when you have an economic downturn. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, scoping just quickly, um, just to recap, you said that there were four areas that the, the province was going to exempt from, from this TRP or this, um, this uh, refusal to process. So it's agriculture, transportation, did you say? Sorry, I didn't catch that on and before. So it was yeah. agriculture, transportation, I think it was knowledge industry. Yeah, so it's it's the uh, so you know there's you know certain management occupations, uh, health occupations, um, okay. you know in terms of the uh, uh, you know some trades, transport equipment operators, uh, and some occupations in uh, manufacturing acti activities or manufacturing utilities. But we will um, once we get approval from the uh, the uh, federal government on finalizing this, then we will post that on the uh, on the website. Mm -hmm. and, so, and when and, and when do you expect that to be an asked sixty four thousand dollar question I know yeah but when, when yeah, do you expect that? I, I, you know we we have uh, submitted a letter uh, we've had ongoing conversations with um, uh, with the federal government about 
you know, conceptually, are they okay with this? And they, they've said uh, said yes. This is part of our, our pilot. Uh, in terms of the actual details, when we get the final sign off, we hope it's um, within uh, you know weeks. And uh, you know, uh, Percy, I don't know if you have any more updated information uh, uh, than I have on it at this point in time. Uh, but we we expect you know hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Percy, any any other? No, Minister, nothing to add to that. I would agree. I think. Uh, that's exactly right. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Persine, and thank you very much, Minister. Just uh, we're, we're running out of time, so I just want to get to still. I want to get to the uh, downsizing of the AMP and and the and the sort of new immigration strategy. So I just have one last question on on this refusal to process. There are multiple streams uh, categories of LMIAs and then permission to bring foreign workers into uh, into into Canada. I suppose. Uh, uh, is this RTP applicable to all streams, all categories of the program? Like dual intents, uh, we're talking, you know, high low wage. Um, we're talking agricultural. I mean, well, the agriculture would probably not be on this on this refusal to process. But I'm just wondering, global tra talents, you know, the global talent pr pr um, uh, stream. Just wondering, is there any? Is it is it category specific or is it general occupation specific? Perhaps I can answer that, Minister. Uh, so um, we are. Our proposal to the federal government does address all those different uh, elements to it, and uh, and I can't presuppose the um, the federal minister's response to us, but we certainly looked at those kinds of things like the global talent stream, uh, dual intent. Uh, what I think we could say about dual intent is that there is no intention to penalize anyone who is here, who is in the permanent resident process, so that they've already uh, in that process of being considered for permanent residence status. Mm -hmm. uh, and the um, and then the details on some of the others you're asking about, I think. We'll need to wait until uh, we have an announcement to make. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Yes, and so, so, and thank you, Percy. Just um, moving along because again, we're running out of time. Where we've got about 18 minutes left, and I don't want to abuse of your time, uh, Minister, and certainly of of of, of, of our panel. Um, I just uh, so so downsizing of AIMP, and this is a follow-up question on 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 something that you said that I think is is makes a lot of sense, and that is how do we harness some of the skill sets that students are bringing to the table here at Alberta. Um, but have you considered sort of the, the, the message of the, the reduction of the AMP quota sends to international students? Um, international students, as you know, are super important to Alberta. They bring a lot of money and uh, and the reduced AMP quota sends a message to international students um, that permanent residence options are limited. Well, we're going to be limited because of the you know of the of the reduction in in, in the in, in the quotas or in the um, numbers. So, what do you think the implications of reducing AMP quotas for international students are going to be? So, I, I don't think they're going to be significant. They're, they may it may cause a delay uh, in terms of their, their ability to access because we're looking at this as a temporary measure. Uh, and the reality is is that. We, we were seeing a decline in, um, in applications because because historically what what we we what we had done with our six thousand slots is we would get out applications through multiple streams um, you know, those temporary foreign workers and inter international students and they would be applying and then we would we would bump up that we would look at the, and the government through the express entry program. The Alberta government would look at well these are areas of, of shortage that we have within our own labor market and so we would reach in through the federal express entry and we would do a nomination uh, into the into the program but well, the reality is is that when we look at doing our assessment from an occupation standpoint right government we're not doing that right now right mm -hmm. so, there's a, so there's a large section of even in terms of the reduction of that 2000 right that we are not reaching out through the AIMP as government because we do not have shortages in these, these occupational uh, areas at that point in time. So it, it's 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 unfortunate, and and I want to express to everyone on the call: we fully support. We have a premier um, fully supports uh, newcomers and immigrations as key to to our economy. Um, we are doing this to 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 quite quite frankly to 
be able to match our demand on the on the labor market um, and and basically help the newcomers who are here who are disproportionately impacted by a negative downturn and not and not exacerbate that issues right now but our hope is is that as we come out of this economic recovery uh, or as we come out of this recession and into our economic recovery we'll be able to make up that and that's that's my desire and i haven't got any commitments from the federal minister but quite frankly those 2000 spots i want it down the rope um <laughs> but but just you know in terms of the actual impact you know a large portion of the um, of the AINP slots we would fill through our own nomination and and we basically pulled that back um so will there be some some impacts on particular individuals and in some of these other streams yes but to say that you were going to be impacting 2,000 international students, that's that's simply not the case uh, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, in terms of doing that. And this is this is this is a temporary uh, a temporary measure. And and I know that you know I have ongoing conversations with my colleague, the uh, Minister of Advanced Education. We want to open our doors more. And, and actually, part of our new stream, like in terms of our overall strategy, is in ter you know looking at new avenues for international students uh, to you know start a business. And work here and we're going to be focusing on that because that's going to be a key pillar of our economic recovery i don't know percy if you want to comment further on that i would just add one thing minister to what you said uh international students still have access to and uh uh the the federal uh processing system and mm -hmm. that so there's been no reduction there and uh in fact, the federal government is uh, has flagged for us that because of the need to shut down some of their overseas operations, that uh, uh, that has created more space, more um, uh, uh, for in-country applications, and to be able to process in-country applications. So. There are still avenues for international students to gain permanent residence uh, other than the Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program. And to reinforce what our minister has just said, uh, the door isn't closed to international students. They can still come through the nominee program, um, but uh, 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 it's prudent to look at ensuring that they are able to economically establish here mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for both uh, the province and for uh, the individual's long-term future. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Percy. Uh, so, so just to sort of follow up on, on on what you just said or what you said, Minister. So you, you talked about about you know sort of looking into the pool in, at the uh, the EE pool and and pulling you know sort of skill sets that we require in the province here. Um, so that 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 sort of brings up two questions. One, will will that criteria be ever made public? Um, so that people understand that if they, they apply, if they have a certain skill set that Alberta is looking for, that they can actually have a better opportunity at, at being selected. Um, because right now that's not the case. Right now there is a, a couple of criteria that we do know that the, the department uh, looks at, being you know whether you have a relative here, you have a work permit, you you studied in in Alberta, so on. But but there is no occupational sort of if you will, occupational demand that that we can point at and say, look, Alberta is looking for this skill set. Therefore, you should apply to Alberta for this particular. Um, if you have this particular background, if you know, do, do, is that yeah, a no, new question or is that? I'll ask I'll ask Percy to comment on the uh, the current process and the current policy decision. But you, you raise a good point, especially as we come out and go as we come out of. Um, the, uh, the recession into the economic recovery, we're going to be leveraging that more and more, mm -hmm. uh, and to the extent that we can we can um, uh, provide more information on how and when we do that, that that makes sense. That's something that we should take a look at. But first, you want to comment on the the uh, the, uh, the current process? Um, certainly, Minister. Um, if I understand your question correctly. Uh, you're looking for how do we decide on what occupations to draw out of the express entry pool, the federal and, pool. And if, and if once decided, then would you make that public? Right. Yeah. Well, uh, the, uh, what we use is two uh, pieces of uh, labor market information that our ministry produces. 
One is the 10-year occupational supply and demand outlook. And the second is a what's called the short-term, and that takes a 10-year view of uh, the labor market. And then the second is the short-term employment forecast, which is done every year, which takes a three-year view. So occupations are classified inside of those uh, forecasts as being in high demand or a medium demand. And what we're looking, what we've used that for in drawing from express entry is in what we think will be high demand occupations. That's Those are the ones we would look for in the express entry pool. Uh, so if you're trying to make a judgment on that uh, for individuals you're talking to, I'd refer you back to those two documents because that, mm -hmm. that's, that's our base, best labor market evidence uh, that then guides our, uh, the decisions of the program. Right, and so the RTP would have a, a an, an impact, obviously, on on selecting individuals who have that background that are on the list. The RTP won't have an impact on that. Uh, the well, uh, if, if we're uh, not looking for that for those for those occupations, and 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 the candidate has that background, would would that not conflict? I, if a candidate has the back, that background and is in the express entry pool, then they uh, certainly, when the nominee program's ready to go back and start drawing from express entry again, uh, they would be there for consideration. But it's mm -hmm. the, as the minister just said to you, uh, we've stopped drawing from the express entry pool and that uh, in terms of processing right now. Um, and that will be get reassessed as we go forward on a regular basis. Uh, right. But uh, in general, I can tell you the the program area uses the those two uh, uh, labor market forecasts to to make their decisions when it comes to uh, drawing individuals who aren't already employed in Alberta. So those other criteria you mentioned are also important, but on the occupational side, it's about, because again, I'll bring you back to looking at who has the, the trying to increase the individual's success in establishing themselves in employment and being able to uh, uh, really get uh, uh, engaged with Al the Alberta economy as as quickly as they can. Right. No, and we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for your response. Um, yeah. So now for sorry, go ahead, I know there's one more question, and maybe just but uh, if um, uh, Parliamentary Secretary you see, maybe he can perhaps provide some closing comments if we we if he was able to get in, that would be yeah, great. absolutely. We'd be, we'd be happy to to hear his closing comments. Has has, has he been able to, uh, Mr. Yassine? Are you there? Uh, hi, Peter. It's Monica. He is unable Monica. to. He's unable to connect techni technically, audially. So we've just been advised just to uh, continue continue on, and he sends his regrets. Okay, thank Sorry you. About that. Thank you very much. Okay, so more on to more fun things now. I think uh, the four new streams under AIMP finally some 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 fun, positive direction, um, uh, and and that's the new Alberta Advantage Immigration Program. So a couple of things, and and before I ask my couple of last questions because we really have only about seven minutes left, I'm just wondering, uh, Minister. Would it be a possibility of, of looking at maybe some of the programs that we already have and tweaking sort of AIMP so that we can take advantage of some of those individuals who are here in the province that who are contributing, who have built, uh, you know, uh, some sort of innovation or, or are here are, are, and, and are employing people yet have no path to permanent residence? And let me just give you a couple of examples of that. Uh, first of all, significant benefit uh, work permit holders are not eligible under AIMP. And to me, that's always been a bit of a you know, a, a bit of a mystery as to why, given that we, you know, we will nominate, you know, working holiday young people who are, you know, 24, 25 years old, who are working in the hospitality area and will not be doing that after they get nominated, I can guarantee you. Yet we have a person, for example, just to give you an example on the significant benefit side, the city of Calgary has brought in a, a forensic videographer, one of the top in the world. He's now 
training some new people in the department and and this is a new world of course of videography because everything is video and he has no path to permanent residence and that's always been a question to me as to why that policy has been in place the other for example we've got a number of self-employed the c11 permit holders who are here who are who, who are you know who, who now have are employing people the ICT work permit, like the intercompany transfer work permit holder, who has some ownership in the parent subsidiary or affiliate or division of the company, even if it's one percent, he's ineligible for 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 to remain in in, in Alberta. And the OOLMIA work permit holder, who is here, I've got a client who's put in two and a half million dollars here, employs ten people, no path to permanent residence because he's self-employed. So, and I'm just wondering this this. The plans and the people have been vetted by ESBC, by IRCC, by CBSA, and yet we still have a sort of a, you know, some sort of um, some sort of opposition to them being nominated in the in the uh, in the system. And I'm wondering if, if that could be tweaked a little bit so that we can still take advantage of those who are already here and already doing some really good work in the in the province. Well, that's a that's a very interesting suggestion. You know, one thing that we 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 did say when we did our Alberta. Uh, advantage immigration strategy did our consultation that this is iterative right um, so we, we wanted to get input on the four streams that we committed to in terms of our, our platform commitment you know some other changes that we might want might want to make we got some suggestions some of them were acting on some are not but this is something that we need to do on an ongoing basis um, so we can actually capture other ideas as how do we tweak the current program so you know um, I, I, I'd like put that one in writing please no no because, 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 because it is, it is important for us um, to be able to understand, okay, what's working, what's not working. Um, our focus this fall is going to be on the, the three new entrepreneurial streams and launching mm -hmm. that and that, uh, uh, getting, the, getting those, uh, those going and then fine tuning them over time. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't look at, 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 at other things because you know, we know um, that uh, critical to economic recovery is attracting the best and the brightest who will actually uh, be able to create jobs uh, mm -hmm. in uh, in Alberta. And so that's a key point. So our focus is going to be on launching those entrepreneurial streams um, this fall. Uh, and we also recognize that it, we're not going to get 100% right. You know, you, we're going to implement it and then we'll be getting feedback from, from your community saying, okay, this, this, and this works, but this doesn't work. You're not going to get what you want. Great. Uh, and then we can actually change it. But I'd rather have a, 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 a you know, a fast fail um, put something in place, get it st stood up, get the input, see how it runs, and then tweak it as we go. And and uh, um, and so some of the suggestions you just made, you made, let's 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 something we can look at down the road. Uh, but our focus is on on these three streams right now. Absolutely, and and I, I do appreciate the invitation, and thank you for that. We KPIC has in the past uh, submitted a paper to to Mr. Yassin. And uh, and so he has that 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 policy paper that we have. But I'd be more than happy to to send it to to your personal attention, Minister, so you can take a look at it, and we can maybe look at how tweaking the system would work a little bit better. So now we only have literally a couple of more minutes, and if I just may ask you uh, just a couple of more questions, and then I will let you go on on your busy day. Um, and I'm just going to pick one of the most the most the ones that are most. Um, yeah, the, the, the issue, the, the, the membership had some questions about the, the students, uh, the student graduate programs. Um, many students are completing programs in Alberta, not necessarily completing business or IT programs. Um, and, and, and we had a, the membership had a bit of a difficult time trying to get their heads around. OK, so why? How do we how do we put that square peg into that round hole? Um, not all, obviously, not a lot of these guys will be able to do that. In, and in fact, would there be a, a certain amount of investment that they would have to make into into qualifying for the for for that program, or how how do you envision that? Yeah, so so I'll, I'll do some general comments and I'll ask Percy in terms of the, the yeah. specific criteria as we're envisioning. And just please note that you know our, our plan is to roll these out in the fall, uh, so we're still finalizing them at this point in time. And and at the end of the day, uh, the final sign off needs to come from the feds. So uh, right. so their working models we're doing right now. You know, it's, it's interesting when you start talking about um, uh, commercialization of ideas, it, this is not just for business students. Quite frankly, a lot of the ideas, when you look at like University of Calgary is my, um, uh, is in my writing and, uh, and the biomed, uh, the sciences, um, the technology um, uh, schools, even the engineering schools, these are where the 
the ideas uh, for potential commercialization are being developed. And University of Calgary, um, and through its business school and the Hunter Hub Innovation Center, uh, supports students in developing business plans uh, in terms of some of the the um, uh, the IP that they're developing, uh, whether it be uh, and some is being undergrad students, but also grad students, the IP that they're developing, uh, and then helping them move towards commercialization. So it shouldn't be viewed as this is only for business students. Actually, it's 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 quite frankly, it's it's more for uh, um, students who are in the uh, it is for any student who who has a business idea uh, and that is applicable for the program. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but when you take a look at where these are generally being generated, it's 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 uh, it's in the in the sciences, uh, and then you know schools like the University of Calgary have some great programs to assist uh, students who are graduating through this of how do they commercialize and start and and start thinking about uh, being being entrepreneurs because it's not just about uh, doing the the research and doing the work and then coming up with the ideas, but how do we commercialize that and the support programs in place? And, and with that, maybe I'll just toss it to Percy to, to, to he can talk a little bit more about uh, our initial thinking on terms of what the criteria would be for this program. Uh, thank you, Minister. So a couple of things to consider. Uh, it's not for for uh, international students who are graduating in Alberta, uh, it, it's not just for starting your own business. It can also be for business succession planning. So uh, if I can use an example of a pharmacy student who graduates who wants to go out to rural Alberta and take over the pharmacy there, uh, that would qualify under this kind of a program. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's there's two streams. One is uh, business succession, and the where the student is is buying an Alberta business and is committed to continuing to operate it. And then the second is for those who want to start their own, who have a business idea, and yes, they'll need to have some uh, capital behind them, either venture capital or their own investment, uh, and uh, they have to have a valid, you know, a viable business plan, uh, and so there'll be some assessment of that, assessment of uh, where their financing is coming from. Uh, we'll look at what kind of experience they have, um, and uh, and then how engaged have they been around starting or running a business beforehand. So. Uh, both for this, for all of our entrepreneur streams, uh, we have a high interest in serial entrepreneurs. So people who have started a company before, uh, but it's not necessarily that. So mm -hmm. a student can, but there, there are certain things that they will have to demonstrate. Uh, and then the more experience they have in different areas, the, uh, the higher they'll be on the selection grid. Great. Well, thank you. That's very about much. as much as I can say. Excellent. Final comments to you, Minister. Well, I just want to say uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, speak to the community. Uh, we really are quite excited about the the Alberta Advantage Immigration Strategy. I so much wanted to release it last spring, uh, but we are where we are. Uh, but but I think it's it, what's what's critically important is you know we are open for business. We know newcomers are going to be a critical point in terms of rebuilding our economy, and we are going to need newcomers. You know, some of the changes, the, the temporary changes we made to the TF, TW and AINP is just matching the current job market demand uh, for the interest of, of uh, newcomers and and Albertans, and 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 also for the interest of the newcomers and TFWs who are here now in the province, given COVID-19. Who need to find work so we, we are very focused on supporting uh, newcomers and I'm, i'll be very excited when we uh, can start launching some of the new uh, programs and we continue to work with uh, organizations such as yours and people in the community to make sure we get those programs right so uh, i want to again thank you for the opportunity and thank uh, uh, percy uh, cummings for uh, participating as well and uh, and to give a shout out on behalf of parliamentary secretary uh, <laughs> Team who's doing a phenomenal job doing outreach into the community, uh, but couldn't make it due to uh, due technical issues today. And and once again, thank you for uh, for including uh, us in this uh, presentation.
And, and thank you very much, Minister, for making time out of your busy schedule. We do appreciate the honest discussion we've had today, and we look forward to sending you that proposal and, <laughs> and continuing the conversation. Thank you very much, Percy. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your time and your expertise, and, uh, and we hope that we're going to be all out of this this, this situation is soon and we'll be prospering again like we like we were in the good old days. Uh, a last word to you then, of course, Lisa, being the chair of, of the Canadian Association of Professional Immigration Consultants per chapter. Madam Chair. Thank you, Peter. So we have heard the clarifications on the Alberta Immigration Strategy directly from our minister, Jason Copping and Mr. Cummins. I understand that many of us still have questions. Therefore, please send your questions to KPEC and we will forward them to Minister Copping's department to get back to us with answers. Otherwise, we shall wait for the announcements in the fall, check the AB government and KPEC websites regularly to monitor the AB immigration changes and updates. Thank you so much again for your time, Minister Copping and Mr. Cummins. Thank you, Peter, for moderating this session. And to everyone, thank you for joining. See you again in our next virtual meetings. Please don't forget to register for our interesting virtual NCIC this year. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you very much, Minister, again. Thank you. Bye now.